um, Russia and China we have an interest in, as you know, uh, Mail.ru and Tencent respectively. And they offer quite wide ranging services. So both of them have portals, instant messaging, emails, games, social networks, all of that. In the rest of the world we focus on e-commerce. So our expansion in Brazil or Eastern Europe or India is solely now focused on e-commerce. And in that there are lots of new products. So uh, if you want to sell your puppy, you want a, basically a classified to do it. If you want to buy a new iPad, you may need something looking like Amazon. And uh, if you want to compare prices, you have a price comparison engine like Buscape. So e-commerce is not a single thing. It's a cluster of many activities. And that's where the innovation takes place. How concerned are you of some of the valuations we've seen in internet operations in terms of these very high PEs? Are you concerned these are early signs of a price bubble? I don't think there's a price bubble generally in the internet today. In fact, um, quite established companies like Google or Yahoo or eBay are trading at what I regard as discounts. They're cheap. It's not a general euphoria like there was in 1999. I think there's some countries overvalued, maybe Brazil, India. You look at the valuation, you just say, this, is too, this discounts too much good news. But it's localized. I wouldn't say it's globally the case. Let's look at China. We've seen some good deals with Epic Games and Groupon China. Not so strong growth in the Tencent business. What do you think are some of the key factors behind strong growth in the region? I think, I think the Chinese economy is still expanding. And... Um, Many people expect it to grind to a halt, but I don't see signs of that. I think it will slow down because China is basically the factory of the world at the moment. And as Europe can afford fewer washing machines, China will produce fewer. So that will have a negative effect. But there's a, something else happening in China, which is that the Chinese are consuming more. You know, they used to eat uh, meat, let's say, once or twice a week in three, 30 years ago. Today they tend to eat meat almost every day. That has to be produced. That creates an internal market. As they grow richer, they consume more. You know, our engineers in China are earning almost that of an engineer in the US or Europe. That wasn't the case 20 years ago. So China's growing, salaries are higher, um, the economy internally is more buoyant, and we basically, we don't export Tencent doesn't export from China, it actually serves the Chinese market from China. So what matters to it is the, the health of the indigenous market, less than the, more so than the export market. Let's look now to Russia and some of the draft policy there around foreign o ownership of strategic assets. Are you worried that this is going to impact on your business? Not really. The business we have an interest in, Mail.ru, is listed in London and uh, we have a stake in it, but we're not a controlling shareholder and um, I think in Russia there's quite a lot of sensitivity around um, resources so if you're an oil company there are all sorts of nationalistic uh, debate going on it's not true of the rest of the economy we've always felt welcome and I think we don't see any risk there Looking now to sub-Saharan Africa, what are your plans for rollout of pay TV? What are your ideas for subscriptions there? I think the next year is going to be exciting. In the past, let's say you were living in Kenya and you're a teacher at a local school. If you want um, all these wonderful channels, you know, Discovery Channel or Disney or whatever, you needed to go to a shop and buy a dish. Then you need to contract an installer to come and install it professionally. Then you have to buy a decoder. So it's quite a convoluted process of getting pay TV. What's happening now is we're rolling out digital terrestrial television, which is a transmitter on a hill, broadcasting about 16 channels. And that's much cheaper. You go to a shop, you buy a decoder for about 500 Rand, you plug it in, no professional installation. So for Sunday nights, you're a final. You can buy your decoder Saturday afternoon, plug it in and get going immediately. And we then provide the service at a much lower rate, typically seven, eight dollars. So I expect a lot of growth. The same is not true for South Africa. I see quite little growth in South Africa. 
because DTT is not licensed, it isn't going to be licensed quickly, but the rest of Africa, yes. Let's touch on South Africa there. Falling disposable incomes, are you worried that's going to impact on subscription take up? In the long term, yes. Uh, you know, uh, pay TV, like any other sector of the economy, is dependent upon the general health of the economy. And as people get more um, despondent, you'll find uh, sales slowing. So I think if, if I look at the year ahead, I feel the rest of Africa might be a lot more buoyant than South Africa.